Hi guys and welcome back to the Lem Average Techies. Today I'm going to show you how to configure aggregated Ethernet interfaces on Juniper. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is our lab here. We've got a very basic setup. I've got a PC with an IP address of 192.168.1.10. On this side it's connecting to a QFX virtual switch and it is named customer site. And then on this side, we've got a data center switch, which is also a virtual KFX switch. And it is connecting to a server with an IP address of 192.168.2.10. All right, so just having a look at the config here, we'll log on to customer site switch. We're just going to do a show display set. And you can see that we have very basic config here. We have a routable interface. 192.168.1.1, which is the default gateway for this PC over here. Then we have 10.10.10.1 slash 3 configured on XE001 at the moment. This is the only interface that has any config on at the moment, connecting these two switches. And then we'll see that we have a static root for 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And the next stop is 10.10.10.2. So 10.10.10.2 is the data center switch and 10.10.10.1 is the customer site switch. You can see that uh, I just indicated that we use 10.10.10.0 slash 30 for the addresses between the two switches. Now the routing is already in place. Everything should be working. So if we log on to the client PC here, we are just going to do a normal ping towards the server, which is 192.168.2.10 and it should work. All right, so there we have it. We have uh, connectivity between customer site and data center. All right, so just having a look at the data center config here, we'll just do a show display set again. And here you can see that we have a static root for 192.168.1.0 slash 24, and the next hop is 10.10.10.1. So 10.10.10.1 is this switch, and 192.168.1.10 is our client PC. We then also have 10.10.10.2 configured on this switch, as mentioned earlier. So communication between the two sites is running on XE001 at customer site switch and XE001 on the data center switch. So what we want to achieve is we want to put these two interfaces in an aggregated ethernet bundle, and that would allow us to increase the throughput as well as provide some redundancy. The thing that you have to keep in mind with configuring AE interfaces is that you need to plan accordingly. For instance, if we are planning to send one gig of traffic through this link here, then two one gig interfaces would suffice for our AE. But if you are planning to have two gigabits per second running over this link, then two one gigabits per second interfaces would not suffice. And the reason for that is if you are fully utilizing both of these links, and one of them goes down, then you will be sitting with a network bottleneck. As a single interface would be fully saturated if one of the links goes down, and you will be having some major network issues. So in this scenario, if we wanted to push two gigabits per second through these links, then ideally we would need four one gigabits per second interfaces in this AE. So the three main advantages of having an aggregated ethernet bundle is, one, it provides you with some load balancing between the links, Two, it provides you with additional throughput. And three, it provides redundancy. All right, let's get right into the config here. Uh, we're going to start with customer site. All right, so you can see we currently have an IP configured on interface XE001, unit 0, 10, 10, 10, 1, slash 30. So we are just going to delete that. So delete interfaces XE001. Or we can just delete the, the whole interface here. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to configure exactly how many aggregated Ethernet interfaces we want on this device and we do that by going set chassis aggregated devices ethernet device count and i'm just going to make it 10 that's uh, usually a good number to start that will give you 10 aggregated ethernet interfaces so from ae0 up until ae9 the next step would be to assign interfaces to this ae bundle and for that we go set interfaces we're going to configure xe001 one, and here you're going to specify ether options, and you're going to type in 802.3 AD. So that is the IEEE standard for aggregated ethernet. And we're going to specify AE0. And we're going to do exactly the same for XE002. So let's just go there. And if we now do a show display set, you can see here that we have 
XE001 and XE002 as part of AE0. So we don't have any config yet for AE0. I'm just going to go ahead and commit this. So the next thing you would do is set interfaces AE0, unit 0, family, inet address. And we're going to use exactly the same IP address on this AE interface as what we used on the directly connected XE001 interface. All right, so 10.10.10.1 slash 30. And we're going to commit that as well. So just as a side note, don't confuse AE with LACP. LACP is a completely different protocol. There's a lot of confusion in the networking world with regards to LACP. You don't need LACP to configure aggregated ethernet bundles or bonding interfaces or trunk interfaces, whatever the different vendors name it. LACP is link aggregation control protocol and it is not needed for an AE to come up. We will do another video on LACP specifically, but for this video, we will only focus on aggregated ethernet. All right, so let's just do a show pipe display set on YAM. So you can see the full config. So we have AE0 with an IP address of 10.10.10.1 slash 30. And we have XE001 and XE002 configured in this AE. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to obviously configure exactly the same on the remote switch. So we've just configured the customer site switch and now we're gonna to move to the data center switch. So you can see here that XE001 has an IP address configured on it. So I'm just gonna run through this. We just delete interfaces XE001, say chassis aggregated ethernet device count 10. We are going to set interfaces XE001, ether options 802.3 AD. And we're going to do, oh, sorry, you have to specify AE0. And we're going to do the same with this one and set interfaces. Before we do that, I just want to show you, if you do a run show interfaces test, you won't see any AE interfaces just yet. Okay. If we do a run show interfaces test here, you will see AE interfaces. Okay. The reason for that is the set chassis aggregated device count. If that is not set, your AE interfaces will not show up. All right, let's continue with the data center config. So set interfaces AE0.0, .0, family INET address. And once again, we're going to configure it with the same IP address as what we used previously, 10.10.10.2. So 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 so so now if we do a show pipe compare, there is our full config that changed and we're going to do a commit. Now we can also do a run show interfaces to us on this side and we should see our AE interface as up. All right, so let's get to testing. Let's go to our client PC and see if we can continue to ping 2.10. We should. All right, so there we go. We have configured our AE interfaces. If you want to have a look at the AE specific config, we can just do a show display set by match AE0. This is basically everything we configured for AE0 on this switch. And if we do the same here, show display set by match AE0, not like that, match AE0. This is everything we configured for AE0 on this switch. So in this setup, the advantages of having an AE interface would be load balancing and redundancy. And we're going to start with showing off the redundancy portion quickly. So we're going to go back to our client PC here. We're going to run a continuous ping to our server. And we're going to shut down one of these interfaces. So I'm just going to shut down XE001. And you will see the traffic will continue to traverse over XE002. Right, let's go. Yeah, so the ping is running. So we'll go back to our switches and we will just set interfaces XE001 disable. And I'm just going to do it the same on this side. The reason for that is if I disable an interface on our EVE server, the interface doesn't actually physically go down on the remote end. So for this to work, I would need to disable the interface on both sides. And this is where LACP would be very, very helpful. But once again, we'll show you that in another video. So going back to our config here. So we just uh, disabled that interface and we can just disable the same interface on this side. 
disable. We haven't committed anything yet. So I'm going to try and do a commit at the same time for both. So just uh, enter, enter. And if we go to our client PC, we might have one drop packet. No, we actually didn't. And the traffic continues to work. We can just confirm that the one interface actually went down. So we can just do show interfaces AE. Run show interfaces AE0. And here you can see that our speed is 10 gigabits per second, even though we have two 20 gigabits per second links in the AE. One of them is disabled. If we do a run show interfaces TERS, we should see XE001 being down and XE001 is down. And then we can just confirm the other side also says 10 gig. So we can just uh, do a run show interfaces TERS first, make sure that XE001 is down and it is. And then we can do a run show interfaces AE0. And the site also says 10 gig. All right, so now we're just going to do the reverse. So we will restore XE001 and we are going to disable XE002. All right, so we're going to delete interfaces XE001 disable and set interfaces XE002 disable. Let me do a show pipe compare. So we are re enabling XE001 and we are disabling XE002. And we'll do the same on this side. Delete interfaces XE001 disable. Set interfaces XE002 disable. Show pipe compare. And we have done exactly the same on this side. So I'm going to do the commit on both sides at exactly the same time again. So commit, commit. And we can go back to our PC. We did drop one packet, but there you can see that the ping continued. Okay, so now we're just going to show you how the AE actually works by doing some packet captures. I am just going to restore both interfaces. So delete interfaces XE002 disable. And we have to just do the commit at the same time again. So delete interfaces XE002 disable. And we're just going to do a commit, both sides, commit and commit. All right, now we can just make sure that our AE is actually running at full speed. So yeah, you can see that it's running at 20 gigabits per second. And we should see the same on the other side. So just uh, run show interfaces AE0. All right, and it is at 20 gigabits per second. So now we're going to start with some packet captures just to show you how the load balancing actually works. As I said, it's not a 100% 50-50, but it'll try and get it as close to 50-50 as possible. For that, we're going to use Wireshark. So we'll just get back to our lab setup here. And remember, we still have our continuous ping running here. So we'll just uh, do packet captures on these uh, switches over here. So first, let's do a packet capture on here and we're going to capture XE001. All right, so this is what the ping packet looks like from this switch's uh, perspective on XE001. So you can see that we have the source as 192.168.1.10, which is this PC. The destination is 192.168.2.10, which is the server. And you can see that it is a ping request. You'll notice that there's no replies on this interface. So that means that theoretically the request is going out over this interface, but the reply is returning over this interface. We'll just verify that. So we go back here, capture, and we will capture on XE002. And as expected, you can see all the replies are coming in via XE002. So that is how the load balancing works. As I said, it's not a 100% perfect load balancing, but it does try its best. And in this case, with a single ping request being sent from client PC to the server, the request is leaving customer site switch via XE001, and the server is sending it back via XE002. So let's just go have a look at our config. If we just do a full config, show pipe display set, you can capture this if you want. You can pause it here. And we will just have a look at the data center config as well. Show pipe display set, no more. Right, and that's all config that you actually need to configure an AE interface with the two members. 
So just one other thing that I want to mention is the minimum link statement. So what the minimum link statement does is if you have uh, two interfaces in your AE and you don't configure the minimum link statement, then it defaults to one. So that means that only one link needs to be active for the AE to be up and running. If you have more than two links, then I would highly recommend you do configure the minimum link statement because if you have a minimum bandwidth requirement and for instance, you've got four links and three links go down, then you don't want the traffic to go over the last remaining link as that'll also create a network bottleneck. I'm just gonna show you how to configure this as well. So this is actually configured under the AE interface. So we go edit interfaces AE0 and here we have set aggregated ether options minimum links and here you can specify the number of minimum links as I said the default is one if you don't configure this so in this case we can also just leave it as one you don't have to configure it as I said if you have more than two links in the AE then you should definitely configure the minimum links required so just to have a look at the picture here again we have two interfaces that are part of one AE0 bundle they are connecting the two sites customer site and data center and as we could see, there is load balancing on the link as well as redundancy. And that's exactly what you want. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.